WVTC Radio Detroit. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, www.wvtcradio.com, or download our WVTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Community Bell Show. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you again to our show this Monday afternoon. You know, we're on every Monday from 4 to 5. I'm your host, Edna Bell. Thank you for joining us. And I have a wonderful guest this morning. Many of you, uh, this evening rather, many of you already know her. Miss Jackie Vaughn Whitaker. Jackie has been with us for many years, even though she's originally from Chicago. We claim her now in Detroit. (laughs) Jackie, welcome to the Community Bell Show. Thank you. Thank you, Edna. Wonderful to be able to be here this afternoon. We appreciate your being here. But before we talk to Jackie about all the wonderful things she's done, you know, my favorite subject, the census, so I've got to remind you about the 2020 census. You need to be counted. And you probably know why, because I tell you every Monday, but I'm going to tell you again, because every person that is not counted, we lose $1,800. And that's $1,800 per person for the next 10 years. It isn't just one $1,800. $1,800 for the next 10 years per person per year. You need to make sure that you are counted. It is so important. You know, the census determines how much representation you get in Congress. So if we don't keep our numbers up, we are going to lose a congressional seat. We now are represented by two congressional seats here in Detroit and the Grant Wayne County the 13th and the 14th district. If we don't get the right count, we're going to lose one of those seats. So you'll only have one representative taking your interest to the state and to the United States Capitol talking about what needs to happen in Detroit. So get counted. You determine how much road money you get. You determine how many schools and where those schools are built. You determine what kind of health care you get. It is so important that everybody is counted. So remember, be counted. When I see you next, or talk to you next week, and I'll see some of you next week, you'll hear me again talk about census and some of the other things that are going on. And if you want to work for the census, you know, go to 2020census.gov slash jobs. 2020census.gov slash jobs if you'd like to work for the census. And there are lots of jobs out there. Go to that website. It will give you all the information you need. You can do it online. It's easy. Go to the website. Talk about things that you can do to help your community. Okay, enough about the census now. Now we're going to talk to our favorite person, Jackie Vaughn Whitaker. Jackie, thank you again for coming. I want you to tell our guests how you got to Detroit, first of all, (laughs) and then what kind of businesses you've been involved in. There have been a number of them. Yes. Well, and it was a very, very strange opportunity, but kind of unique. Mm-hmm. I was working for Mr. Johnson, who owned Jet and Ebony Magazine at the time, working for the radio st- station called WJPC. That was where Tom Joyner was. Okay. And I was in the midst of doing sales, having a wonderful time in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> 
had everything I thought a young girl would like. Mm -hmm. Had a condo on the lakefront and a nice Volvo with a drop top. I thought <laughs> things were just wonderful. And I got this call from Detroit saying, we need you. You need me for what? <laughs> <laughs> they said, we want you to come here and work for a radio station and sell, you know, air time. I said, I don't know. I'd never been to Detroit before. They said, you've never been? Oh. I said, okay. <laughs> so they flew me here. And the station that brought me in was W um, I R E. Okay. Okay. And that was back when Karen Savelli and what's his name? They would do baby. They were it was it, it was the rock and roll station. Okay. Rip. W R I F. Did okay, I say yeah. I R E? Mm -hmm. I was with Wired before. That's <laughs> country. But Riff was the rock and roll. Okay. So when I got here, um, they picked me up from the uh, airport in a limousine. I was like, really? <laughs> they drove me around Detroit, showing me all the highlights of Detroit, saying, you're going to love it. Had all the newspapers, magazines, trying to make me <laughs> really <like> understand it. <laughs> it. I said, okay. Went in, met with the corporate executives and stuff. And they offered me a job. And it's like, it was really very attractive. Mm -hmm. I mean, so attractive in my 20s. I was like, really? <laughs> and they, I says, well, I don't even know how I'm going to relocate. I had never, never done it before. Mm -hmm. They says, don't worry about it. Don't We're going to put you up in a <laughs> hotel. You can stay there as long as you like. Everything you want, all your meals, everything, until you find the place you want to live. I was like, really? <laughs> and so <laughs> I said, OK, I'm going to do it for just for two years. Mm -hmm. Went back and packed my things and came over. And man, it was wonderful. And I started working for the station and selling airtime. And it was it was really different. It's right over on uh, Ten Mile, right off of the lodge mm -hmm. where Channel Seven is. Uh -huh. I was right in that. That's where Riff was at okay. the time. And started doing that. Loved it. And then I moved from that station to WJR. Mm -hmm. And JR was the, like the big mega station at the time, which it still yeah. has that reputation. And I was with J.P. McCarthy and all those guys mm -hmm. and, and still selling time until finally I said, you know what? You could do better than this. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and I started my own company. Really? So I walked out of there and walked into my own office. Mm -hmm. Started and never turned around. So I've been an entrepreneur for years and years. Uh, and, and what kind of company did you start? I started a marketing and advertising company, uh -huh. and um, it was called Vaughn Marketing. And man, we had so many wonderful clients we worked with all over the years. Some of them that come to mind that really made a difference. One of them that you know them. And that was um, the Area Agency on Aging. Yes, yes. Mr. Paul, Paul Bridgewater. Bridgewater. Yes. Man, I loved working with Paul because he it was like coming in at infancy time of their development. Mm -hmm. And I was also growing. And Phi Stevens, I don't know if you remember her years and years ago. She was a big PR person. Mm -hmm. And she put me under her wings and showed me a lot of things. And she's gone on now, but she was wonderful. We did a lot. We took Meals on Wheels from raising, like, maybe they were making about $20,000 a year to over a million wow. a year in terms of fun development. Mm -hmm. And it was great. I mean, we did golf outings. We did chef fests yes. and all of those things. And then I started getting more into the corporate area. So I worked with people like Mercedes-Benz and with um, Chrysler and, and AT&T and Mishcon and Edison. I mean... All of a sudden, it just started growing and ballooning. And I had so many different staff. People work for me. A lot of people you know that I help them get their start in the different mm -hmm. areas. And the company just became a place where we cultivated talent and helped them when it was time for them to go on, find different areas yes. for them to go in. There was one I know very well. My daughter, Alicia, worked yeah, for Alicia for a while. Yeah, Alicia. They're talking that? about doing a reunion because there's so many people. <laughs> I don't know if you know Ellen Hill. Yeah. Ellen Hill was with me. She was my protege. She came out of Spelman. 
Ellen is now the vice pres president of the Detroit Tigers. Oh, wow. And uh, we were able to be instrumental in helping her, you know, move in that direction. Chuck Bennett. Yes, yes. <laughs> Chuck Lurker. I mean, I can go on and Carla Hall. It's just so many. But we all had uh, a good time. We learned. And it was a great place to, to start making things happen. And I remember once I worked for the city of Detroit. And I did a campaign, and I remember this. We going way back. Shop your block. Yes, <laughs> yes, that goes way Shop back. Shop your block was awesome. And um, Catherine Davis, yes. Kartek, mm -hmm. she was one of the people I worked with. And we really did a lot of things in the community. We tried to go back into the community and get stores to, you know, really up their ante in terms of getting their facades in order and just being ready for what was going to be an influx of people mm -hmm. coming back instead of shopping in the suburbs only they would come back into the city and we had all types of things that we put together to make it happen and we were able to show a, a increase in the amount of business that oh, came back. I remember that well. Work with you. That well yes with the county yes. airport mm -hmm. I helped to do the um, stadium yes. before the stadium mm -hmm. was built did the groundbreaking I did a lot of things in terms of minority procurement a lot of things for Mishcon and for Chrysler helping minorities get business opportunities working with DEG Singh and um, I remember the most important thing was in my working I tried to find time and this is what we have difficult time mm -hmm. doing Find time to do something to give back. Yes. Instead of just being in take, the take, 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 take. take, take. Mm -hmm. I would say, okay, what am I going to do? So along comes Booker T. Washington Business yes. Association. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Alan Young. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Alan was like, come on, you got to work with us. I said, okay. So I eventually became president of that organization mm -hmm. and we did a lot of things. We worked with Charlie Beckham. Yes. We did Don Barton. Don Barton. Oh, he was one of my clients. Yes. yes. Uh, LeVan Hawkins, yes. Don Barton, all of those guys. I mean, I had some really good opportunities. And to work they with were some. good people who gave back. They did a yes. lot in the community that some people don't even know about. Yes. But they did an awful lot in the yes. community. And the thing I like so much about what you did is that you helped young people mm. come yeah. into the business. Yes. And, and help them kind of learn what it was they really wanted to do mm -hmm. and and then they would leave spread their wings and, oh. and that's and the name of the game is pay it forward and right. then they help others come do what right. they want to do yes and, and, but, but in the meantime they're learning and they're making some money to take care of themselves but they learn the business and they learn what they want to do and what they don't want to mm -hmm. do and it was a learning process and so many of the young people who work with you mm -hmm. uh, are out there doing some really really exactly. great things now exactly and then one thing that i think and i still think about it today i try to instill in young people that are trying to go into business one come to work be on mm -hmm. time i used to, i was told stay till after your boss mm -hmm. has left Show how committed you are to working. And if you're on time, you're late. <laughs> see, now, now, Sandy Rose and I worked at Michigan Bell Telephone Company. If you, you, you didn't walk in the door at 8.30, because that's when you were supposed to start. You walked in the door right. at 8, 8 o'clock between 8 and 8.15. Uh -huh. So by the time it was time to get your, turn your key on, as they say, or begin taking calls, you were ready to go. Mm -hmm. They didn't play that in Bell. No, no, no. You came to work, and you came to work on time, and you learned that, and you carry it with you for the rest of your life. You are always early. Exactly. And it, you are always there, and if you can't do something, you always tell the person that you're committed to that you can't do it. Exactly. And, I mean, it's just a common courtesy, but so many people these days don't it's get it. So don't do hard. it. so hard. The hardest thing that we as entrepreneurs face is staffing mm -hmm. and being able to attract good staff and keep them there and keep them motivated and I think that what it is is that in our school systems we got to take it back okay mm -hmm. we don't teach as much we teach what's needed mm -hmm. in the books 
but we need to talk a lot about what's going to happen after. We walk out of these school doors, and we throw up these mm -hmm. hats from graduation. How are we going to survive? And one thing I'm going to tell you, one man in my whole career, Mr. Johnson was good at this mm -hmm. too, but there was a guy named Marcellus Alexander, and he was my uh, immediate supervisor when I came here with Rick. And what happened was every time I was the only African-American woman, mm -hmm. person on the team for a long time, and I would struggle, I'd go out and I would come in and they would say, here's the goals. And I would come in and I'd bring my, when we have our one-on-one -on -one meetings, and he would always have something to say about me. And I, I, I stopped him one day, I says, you know what, as hard as I'm working, I know I'm reaching 100. He says, you're right. You're on point. You're on 100. He says, but what I expect from you is 120, 130. <laughs> I want you to <laughs> exceed the goal. Succeed the goal because, because of who you are. And I know you can do it. Because of mm -hmm. who you are, you're going to be met with so much in terms of opposition. So you got to do better than them. You got to go ahead. So what happened? It was amazing. They had sales contests, and after that discussion, girl, I won a trip to Jamaica. <laughs> I won the airline ticket. I won so much stuff, because every contest, I was determined. I had to go out there and work all night and day. Mm -hmm. I was I was doing it. I was going to exceed everybody else's mm -hmm. seat. And, and I, I, I would love to find him. I think he's, he's in Baltimore somewhere. We talked maybe about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing how one or two people in your life can say a few things that stays with you mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Exactly. So I think that what we need to do as role models is embrace young people and try to get those things, something, something they can hold on to to make them understand. It's not, it's, it's rough out here. And it's not easy. It's, it's not easy at all. That's, and, and they see people who have succeeded and it appears to them that, oh, these people are on easy street now, but they don't know how hard it was for people to get from A to B. No. They don't know all the struggles that they had, no. all the, the, the sleepless nights they had, and, no. and some of the painless paydays that they had no. to get from A to B. No. So they may be doing really good right now, but there were times when that, that yeah. was not the case. Yeah. And so we need to help young people understand that. Right. And, and in doing so, we're gonna help them be so much better than they ever could have been. Right. And I was, I got married and that was the other reason I didn't go back to Chicago after two years, mm -hmm. I promised them. I met and married a man and had two children. Mm -hmm. And we had a good situation for a while, but then the competition came, and this, we get, when we got into this subject, we'd be here until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Men and women and, and successful black women, okay? It takes it's a strong easy. man mm -hmm. to accept a successful black woman. Okay, yes. and I don't want to go too deep, but that's <laughs> exactly what happens. The more you succeed, the more sometimes they push back like, ooh, you could do that or you did mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So ultimately we did part ways and we were divorced. So then here I am, a single mom, an entrepreneur. So my children learned a lot about Booker T. Washington Business Association, <laughs> Bond Market, everybody that worked at Bond Market, he <laughs> knew my children mm -hmm. because I was not the mom that wanted to leave them at home. Mm -hmm. I would figure out a way to leave and go get them and bring them and be with me so that I can keep going because I wanted them still to have the best situation Absolutely. in terms of good schools, clothes, everything. I wanted them to have a good life. And also to see what mom was doing, too. Yes, and they did. Mm -hmm. They saw. Mm -hmm. And now they talk. When we talk, they say, you know what, mom, I remember. I remember when you did the promotion with AT&T. And they had, remember when they changed the uh, area codes from from three one to 313? We did Two, phone four, heads. Uh -huh. Yeah. We had these things called phone heads. And we had them on, on some of my staff. Mm -hmm. And we would go into the malls and we were handing out the slips. My kids was right there with me. So <laughs> <laughs> then down at Hart Plaza, I used uh -huh. to do all the concerts. I used to run Shane Park. I mean, I did a lot of stuff that was very, very exciting. So my daughter, 
in one breath, she's like, I wish you had stayed in that business than mm-hmm. what I'm in now. <laughs> she said, because that was exciting. She, they had enjoyed it. Um, I did concerts, Thorn Apple Valley. Thorn Apple Valley Gospel Celebration. That was something that I created. And this was to reach into the gospel community and get unity through the, the gospel singing. And it was a wonderful thing initially, but we live and learn as we're going. Mm-hmm. So the first three or four years, we would have the competitions at like music hall and different places. And then once I just had a soul searching opportunity with someone in the, the um, clergy. And they said, you know what, Jack, I like what you're doing, but I don't like the word competition. People singing against another one. Mm-hmm. They're all singing the gospel. They're singing about the Jesus, the glory of God. So how can one be a winner and the other? And I said, you know what? I'm going to go with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I went back to Thorn Apple Valley, and I said, listen, I don't want a competition anymore. They said, excuse me? Mm-hmm. I said, we're going to call it the Thorn Apple Valley Gospel Celebration, Gospel Choir Celebration. Okay. And everybody that participates will be awarded. They looked at me and said, are you lost your mind? <laughs> I said, no, trust me. We're still going to have as much mm-hmm. excitement. And we did it. And it went over great. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it continued for almost like about 10 years. We did it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the promotions that I, I really enjoy creating and and executing. Well, we know Miss Sandy Rose, the owner of the station, is a gospel singer and has a choir, so I know she, <laughs> she might have heard of that. She knows well. <laughs> she knows about it well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so then what happened was it got hot to McDonald's start looking over there and said, hmm, what are they doing over there? So McDonald's had more deeper pockets than Thorn Apple Valley. So McDonald's said, we're going to do a big one. And then it was another um, telephone company. I can't remember who it was, but another one. Mm-hmm. They came in and tried to do it. But McDonald's still yeah. reigned out being one yeah, of the I highest, they and did. they took it. <laughs> so then mm-hmm. I said, okay, i got to get my gospel in, because i always trying to figure out how to mm-hmm. get my gospel. Because I've been singing in a choir all my life. Uh-huh. You know, As a matter of fact, when I, they just were talking about it at choir rehearsal, because I had to direct this past Sunday. Uh, just off the whim. And I said, when I was seven years old, I directed the choir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I said, I can do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. But Tell us what church you directed. Oh, I'm at uh, Empowerment Church. Okay. And this is a brand new church. I mean, mm-hmm. we're five years old this year. Mm-hmm. We're celebrating our fifth year anniversary. We're under the direction of Reverend Carlisle Fielding Stewart. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it is, it's refreshing. <clears throat> And it was very difficult for me to make the move because uh-huh, I sure. had been at my church for 29 years. Wow. I was with Reverend Jordan. And Reverend Jordan Corinth, passed. And Reverend Jordan uh-huh. passed away, Lord. I mean, I believe <clears throat> we go to church so that we can worship. But mm-hmm. when your spiritual leader is not only just your spiritual leader but your friend, mm-hmm. it sometimes it you have a, a hard time oh girl it, it was it was the most difficult thing i had to go through mm-hmm. and it was so sudden that he just he left us mm-hmm. and then i got a call from somebody over at empowerment mm-hmm. they had only been there about two months they said jackie we need you to come and sing please just just sing in a choir with us we we don't have a lot of people in there mm-hmm. and we need some voices i said well i'm singing over here at corinthian they said, come on I said, well, good. You all rehearse on Wednesday. They rehearse on Thursday. I would pull it you off. And I'd be at one service. <laughs> My husband started saying, what are you Have doing? You your mind? <laughs> I, said, I said, I'm trying to sing in two different churches. He says, okay, I'm going to check out this church you're talking about, Empowerment. So he came, and the first day he came, I was sitting out in the audience because I think the men were uh, uh, serving, and I wasn't in the mm-hmm. choir. He said, come on. I said, what are you doing? He said, we're joining. He said, you better come on with me. <laughs> so I said, we haven't told. He says, uh, we're going. Oh, and, we went. and then he joined the choir. Oh, my goodness. So he had, we'd never been in a choir together. Yeah. So that is really exciting to have your mate. You know, I believe, you know, they talk about equally yoked and all of that. Mm-hmm. I, I just believe that when you have a mate, 
having being on the same spiritual plane is it's so important, important absolutely. because it becomes a foundation of your yeah. relationship and when their things so go wonderful. down your yeah, girl this is one thing we pray together we sing together when we go home from rehearsal we have the way to put our music on and we're in and there the we have at home, we man. have church at home <laughs> I love and it. it's 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 a, it's really really great and it's uplifting, and and we have a good time. So, it uh, it makes for a good a good time. Oh, to, absolutely! To and keeps the marriage tight. It does. It, it really important. does. And That's so important. And I I now realize how important it was, mm -hmm. and it's it's coming more evident. But um, he speaking of him, his name is Eric Whitaker. Yes. And he was with General Motors, mm -hmm. and he retired as an engineer, uh, from being an engineer after, ooh, 30 years or so. And he bought Baker's Keyboard Lounge. The legendary <laughs> The Baker's oldest Keyboard jazz Lounge. club in the world. Yes, the so, legendary. Okay, so he buys Baker's, and I say, okay, this is right a year before we get married. And I'm like, okay, so how are you going to do this? I said, I still have to run my business. I'm not going to run Baker's. Mm -hmm. You do Baker's, I'll do mine. So we kind of, you know, I, yeah, I still help out when I can, but I did creep up on him and say, listen, your Sundays, when I come over there after church, there'll be a lot of church people there. So, you know, why can't we do something? Mm -hmm. He said, what do you mean do something? I said, I like to see a gospel brunch or he said, okay, I'll tell you what, if you change that, that, term and make it fit into my you know my, my jazz my he says how about inspirational jazz i said we got it so we started <laughs> inspirational it. jazz right. so we do that on sundays and what we do is we allow different churches mm -hmm. to come and they can actually have the door whatever the door price is mm -hmm. let's say ten dollars twenty dollars they get whatever they get from the door so they can fill the place and they can use that money for fundraising for things in their churches. Oh, that's wonderful. So it's a real good give back. And I have found that, number one, you can praise the Lord anywhere. That's I don't right. care what you say. Right. You can praise him in your car. You can praise him in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Praise him anywhere. And part of what we should do is, as Christians, we should be evangelizing in some way. Everywhere. So getting to people who would, you that would get never in go in the church. That's right. Well, we found people. Well, we have had some fun up in there <laughs> well, that on Sundays. <laughs> that is incredible. That so is it's it's incredible. it's really it's really nice how we can come together and work together. Uh, right now, Livernoy is going crazy over there. Oh, have you seen what's oh. happening? Man, ooh, yes. the city is doing us yes. a job because they're trying to improve it. I know, but, but they didn't. Know, the timing was bad. They, we, why would you wait till in the summer, the prime time? But do you know what time it is this week? What's this week? Um, yes. PGA. Mm -hmm. Yes, of all things. And they, come and they to knew us. it was coming. They came to us and asked us to do special programming for them. And they can't, can't get, get in there. I know. I can't, you know, I, I'm at New Prospect right down the street from you Vegas. Are, you're right. We can't get to church. We have to go all the way down uh -oh. the north to Eight Mile. Y'all better get a helicopter to get to church now. Unless we <laughs> go up Wyoming or come use one of the back streets to get you to Kimbrough and know. come up. You it is just. Um, I love that church. It's 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 a nightmare trying to get to church. I oh. said, oh my goodness, but um, yeah, that was the planning of that wasn't the best. Yeah, I don't think. They, ew. Yeah, wasn't so the best. we Speaking don't know. of golf. Golf. Yeah. You know, we we, we <laughs> love golf. Yes, we do. We talk about our trip. We just came back from. Oh my in, God. In Tampa and Innisbrook. Oh, the I wish golf I had brought some pictures. Owned by Sheila Johnson. Yes. And Absolutely. it is an incredible facility, incredible yes, facility. Yes, it that is. Like, like to talk about is our Michigan group. Talk about Michigan and, and okay. Brook. Well, for those of you who never heard of, Browns Mill is a group of ladies that have come together to do this fantastic golf tournament. Started, they had it in Georgia, then they went to North Carolina, South Carolina, and this year they decided to bring it to Florida, which Edna just spoke about the uh, – golf course. We're at uh, Ennisbrook, which is owned by Sheila Johnson. So it was a nice opportunity. But what it is, is that state by state, we compete against each other and also as individuals in our various flights. 
Michigan, there were 331 golfers mm -hmm. total. Yes. Michigan brought 61 golfers, lady female golfers, to the tournament. We were the record attendees. We had a wonderful time, and we had a lot of different uh, people who won in their various flights. It was just a beautiful opportunity. But what was so special about it was being able to fellowship with women from Across the Florida, country. California, Atlanta, Connecticut, um, Connecticut. New Jersey. They were from Texas. everywhere. And I just know that the, from the camaraderie and from all the mm -hmm. comments that it will go on and on. This was their 21st. 21st. Mm -hmm. We were there for the 20th anniversary last year. So I commend the ladies of Browns Mills for, for putting it together. But I also salute those ladies who went the miles to go all the way there. We went together, we yes. had matching shirts. We were, we were, not only were we good, but we were beautiful. We were sharp. <laughs> we were sharp. <laughs> we were sharp. <laughs> and we had so much fun. And we're looking forward next year to yes. go again. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. I've heard rumors it mm -hmm. may be. Some. But, uh, but wherever it is, Michigan will be represented well. As and I'm so year. glad you were able to I come. I am sure and, uh, I was going to be able to come, and I'm so glad I was I am so happy It was did. absolutely incredible. We, the fellowship among golfers from women from around the metropolitan area, and we're talking about Flint and West Bloomfield, and I mean uh, Detroit and Canton, from mm -hmm. all over the metropolitan area were there, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful right. time. And I think about golf now. You were one of the first ladies I ever golfed with. Yes. And I was looking through some old pictures yeah. because I just did a move and I was, you know how you move and you start. I saw some pictures we had on these big hats. Yeah, we used to wear hats back in the <laughs> these 90s. These were not golf hats. Michelle these McGann big, hats. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell you, Miss Edna Bell would take me out golfing and she would tell me everything she knew about it. It was such a, I mean, that was really nice of you because you didn't, you didn't, was a snobby because I couldn't hit like you could, but eventually I started hitting that ball. Yes, yes, and that's <laughs> the name of the game, get as many women on the course as possible because when I started playing, there were very few women out there playing. Yes. And I said, I gotta find a way to get some other women out here and you and several others stepped up and now you had just gone I'm, far I'm, beyond <laughs> what I did. And I'm just happy to be around you guys because you guys play some golf. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. We've got an, a group called the T-Sets mm -hmm. that will be celebrating its 40th anniversary in golf this year. Yes. And we've got a golf outing coming, everybody, to celebrate that anniversary. Jackie, talk about the golf outing because Jackie is chairing the committee. Okay. Our 40th anniversary committee. Yes, I am definitely uh, excited about it. Uh, my co-chair, both Bonnie McWilliams and myself, we are working hard to uh, make this the best ever. We're going to celebrate it at Eagle Crest, which is located in Ypsilanti. Now, this course is picturesque. If you ever want to feel golf in its finest, you have to come to this course. A lot of beautiful water uh, pictures, greenery, mount, you know, hills. It's just, it's, it's wonderful. A beautiful, wonderful, beautiful wonderful, course. wonderful course and very well maintained. Mm -hmm. The date is July the 20th. Now, we're looking at about three and a half weeks out now. So those of those that are interested, it's very simple how you can do it. T-SET is spelled T-E-E-S-E-T, -T -E -E -S -S -E -T, T-SET.com. Org. Just go right online and push tournament and you'll find everything about the 40th tournament coming up in terms of what you can do, how you can register right there online. And there may be people out there that want to sponsor. The purpose of what we're doing is not just to celebrate the 40th, but we want to help give scholarships to young people who are inspiring to be involved in golf and also want to further their education. So. We encourage you to, to support us, to come out and play, call us up, find out if you want to volunteer, if you want to donate something to make the event even better. You can go right on there, and if it's okay, and I'd Absolutely. like to give them a number. Please do. 248-797-0000. Um, 
1-800-273-0053 is my number, and you can call me, and I'd be more than happy to talk to you about what you can do to help support the event. 40th anniversary, some legendary ladies that l still are here were the founders. We're going to be recognizing them and also celebrating a wonderful event. So I want everybody to remember that. The number again is 248-797-0053. And we come back, I'm going to give you Bonnie's number. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back in just a moment, everyone. Uh, and we're going to have some other good stuff to talk about. Um, you haven't heard all about Miss Jackie Vaughn Whitaker and her business opportunities. So <laughs> she's got some other business to, that you will want to hear about. So we will be back in just a couple of minutes. Gotta show them love at all times, all times, all times. You got the end against the Thanksgiving. Stroll through the carpet plates. Let it be a testament of how you live it. And all of the ways he's made. Got, gotta make sure you show you're grateful. More than that, show them that you're able. To give them what's due when the good times. And even go harder in the bad times. Because praise is beautiful from the upright. It's gonna be. Welcome back to Community Bell, everyone. It's Monday afternoon, fireworks day in Detroit. We're going to mm -hmm. pray that the rain stays away that, so that we can see the fireworks tonight. But welcome back to the Community Bell Show. Our special guest this afternoon is Miss Jackie Vaughn Whitaker. And Jackie has been talking about all her wonderful business expertise and all the things she's done in business. Uh, and we've talked about golf. 
She's going to tell you a little bit more about the TSEC's 40th anniversary golf outing that will be held on July the 20th at the Eagle Quest Golf Course in Ypsilanti. It's easy to get to right off of I-94. It's a beautiful course. So put that on your calendar. You will love it. Jackie? Yes. Thank you, Edna. Um, one other thing in terms of the event, the format is quite different this year. We're having a two-person scramble and three different flights. It could be two men, two women, or a man and woman. So lots of prizes, lot of opportunity to get involved in different things that are going to be going on that day, a very festive day, and the time is 8 a.m. We're teeing off. We have a continental breakfast before we tee off, and again, if you want to find out more, go to T-E-E-S-E-T T -E -E -S -E -T dot org, and you will find how you can register right there online, and send us a message. Send it to myself or Bonnie, and we will get back to you. Thank you. I really want to see all of you there. And if you have any items you'd like us to put in our gift bags for all of these wonderful people, there'll be executives and all sorts of community people there, call the number. We'll pick it up. We're looking to have about 100 golfers, so I would suggest that you, if you want to put something in our goodie bag for people who are going to be able to uh, respond to you in terms of uh, dollars, send it to us. We'll put it in the gift bag, and it'll be a way for you to um, advertise some of your business. So that's another way you can help out the T set and help us with the scholarships because the money goes to scholarships for young ladies. So we are excited about that. We are very, very excited about that. Jackie, talk mm. about the White House, mm -hmm. your latest venture. We'll talk about the White House, but not the one you know of, okay? okay. <laughs> no, no, not that one. The one that's here in no. Michigan. <laughs> um, it, the White House is an, the company that I own currently. And I have to tell you, Edna, the way I, d I came about going from marketing advertising into home care is amazing. Um, this happened in 2006. I was very sick, mm -hmm. and I was I hospitalized. Remember. And I was hospitalized for nine months. Mm -hmm. And during that time that I was hospitalized, a lot of people, including my family, gave up on me. They just didn't think I was going to make it. A few people in the hospital thought I wasn't because a lot of people were dying from what I had contracted. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't from the surgery, but it was a very unusual staph infection that pretty much was taking people out. Mm -hmm. But um, my faith really helped me during that time and a lady that I finally found after all of these years. I told the story about what happened and someone at church knew her and found her for me. I was in a room and I was in a lot of pain and I, she said I was always hollering out so she came in <laughs> <laughs> to see what she could do. And she, she prayed for me, she was an evangelist. Mm -hmm. She prayed for me and she told me something. She said, I hear you screaming, I hear you hollering. She says, but what I want you to do is every time the pain comes, I want you to just say, praise God. I want you to praise him as best you can. She said, when you do that, the pain is going to dissipate. I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> I said, ma'am, do you know I am in too much pain? She says, honey, I want you to do it. And true enough, I mean, I prayed, I, I praised, and eventually what happened was I was supposed to go home. And I went home, and before I could stay there 24 hours, my fever went back, back up to 104 mm -hmm. million that the infection was That's still good. prevalent. Mm -hmm. So I did that three times. The third time, I told them that I was going to a different hospital. And the driver says, no, your orders are to take you to this hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm not mentioning any names. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, take me to this other hospital. <laughs> so they took me there, and when they saw I had this big incision, and they were like, oh, no, you got to go back to where <laughs> they did the surgery, <laughs> and, and we and can't take you. <laughs> I, again, I, I praised God. I, I held his hand, and I said, Lord, we got to do something. So they brought the chief of staff down 
to meet with me. And I told him about the things that were happening in the other hospital that I felt was helping me not to get better, mm -hmm. to get worse. He listened very intently, and he came out and told the doctors and nurses, they're going to take me. They said, this is against all the rules of our hospital. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. He says, we're taking her. And they took me, and they called in the head of infectious disease. They, they isolated me, and they worked with me. And in 30 days, I was cured. Okay. And I prayed God to God. Bless. And I said, if you help me get through this, I promise I'll help people for the rest of my life. So I went back to my home in West Bloomfield, and on the 14th hole of that North <laughs> Golf Course, it was going well. <laughs> and I converted that house into a home to bring other people in that I could mm. help. And it just started growing from there. And I went from just having a, you know, a, one single care home to having a home there, one in West Bloomfield, one in Farmington, one in Southfield. And then I don't know where the people came from, but it was a word of mouth. They just knew that if I was involved, I was going to care for them. Mm -hmm. And the business has grown and now divided into two companies, White House Services and White House Custom Services. And we provide care for quadriplegics, paraplegics, people that have been in auto accidents. Um, and it has been a wonderful opportunity. We have over 40 caregivers oh that goodness. I employ along with different RNs, LPNs, people that want to help other people. And it has been a, a, it's a different, labor of love is what it's a been. different mm -hmm. road, so much different than the glamour of marketing and advertising. <laughs> yes. I'm dealing with, I like the fact that the mothership, I call it, which is in West Bloomfield, mm -hmm. My offices are there because the house was so big. The, f the house is 5,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So we we're able to have our offices on one floor yeah. and we have clients on another. So I'm able to just go up and sometimes a client will come to me and says, will you make me a peach cobbler or whatever? Mm -hmm. And the joy I get out of just going in and, and putting on my smock and going into the kitchen and, 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 and cooking you something. Folks, she is a wonderful cook. I we like having cook. meetings at her house because we get the best food you have ever had. We get wonderful homemade food, and it's delicious. Well, um, I come from a background of food, and I'm glad you brought that up because um, my best best friend of the whole wide world was my, my sister, my older sister, mm -hmm. and she owned a restaurant in Chicago called Army and Lou's. Army and Lou's was a lot like Baker's. Mm -hmm. The difference is I was there. I remember that time I was I was there for a conference and I said I gotta find Janice's family restaurant oh, and a group of us came to the restaurant. And it's and just a there. nice yes, little it's quaint, a, quaint, quaint a nice restaurant, na neighborhood and restaurant that was wonderful. And so she uh, unfortunately transitioned mm -hmm. from here, and she was my she was my rock. She really helped I me remember. to even make my company even more solid than it was, mm -hmm. and unfortunately. I mean, things happen in our lives, but we have to think about why God allows things to happen and, and be able to take the positive from it and keep moving. Uh, she passed away 48 hours before my wedding. Yeah, I remember that. And um, that was the hardest decision yeah. to make if I was going to go ahead and get married. Um, but I knew how much, as she was transitioning, she wanted me to marry Eric. Mm -hmm. and. I said, okay, we're going to do this, and it was a bittersweet day. I cried so many tears of, of sorrow and joy on the day that I got married, and I changed and didn't have a honeymoon and took care of taking care of her, but she would have taken care of me. She was my big sister, mm -hmm. and, and I miss her. Her I name was Dolores Rouse. I remember her. Mm -hmm. you really, you really yep. was. She was, she was neat. So, she, Cool. My, Come when we have meetings <laughs> over there at parties at your house. She was right there taking care of us. Right. <laughs> yeah. I just believe that um, what makes people successful in this world is not just the money, mm -hmm. but their faith and how they're able to find a way to help others because that's what God intended us Absolutely. to do. And to work through the difficult times. Yes. And everybody's going to have difficult times, but it's how you handle it.
You got to get yeah. right back yeah. up. Yeah. 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 You got to get down. right back up. And that's yeah. what happened Sunday. I had to, um, our minister music um, left, and we didn't have everything together. And they said, Jack, you got to sing. I said, no, I'm not ready. They said, break every chain. You got to mm -hmm. sing it. I was like, oh, my God. I didn't have a chance to practice. I said, okay, we're going to do it. And we did it. And I got so many calls and people were saying, oh my God, what, you know, but my heart was heavy because I just buried my stepson Saturday. Oh. So his funeral was Saturday and Sunday morning mm -hmm. I was singing, but I was trying to share with the congregation what was more important in life is that we embrace each other. We're not going to always be here. Right. And we had got to understand what death is all about. and. We have tears from it, but we still have to maintain and know what to gather from what has happened. Exactly. And be and able how to, to get there, how to get through it. And how to transition people. And God always has, helps you to make it. You know, you there are times when you just think you're not going to be able to get through it. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, something is happening, and you say, oh, thank mm -hmm. you, Lord. Yes. You just, just help me get through another yeah. day with it. Another and, day. And that prayer always works. And boy, yeah. boy, boy. Well, thank you so much. This well, has been wonderful. Thank you. I'm it's so been glad wonderful you were able too. To join us. Now you got you. me all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you could join us. Thank I'm you so, so glad much. I was this able was, to. This was, this was this was wonderful. I wanted people to hear real stories from real women who have done real things and have and it hasn't always been easy. No, it's not easy. But they've been able to make is. it through. Yeah. And come out on the on the other side. Even better than they were before. Better than before. And so it's it's a it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's, it's a, blessing. a blessing. We thank God for that blessing. Well, I'm glad to see what you're doing. This is a great opportunity to be able to, to it's it's, it's a vessel for mm -hmm. getting out information. It is. And, and I commend you. Yeah, we do. Yeah, too we're just happy about our, our owner, Miss Sandy Rose, Rose. Everybody, Sandy Rose, because you know, it's hard. Mm -hmm. But it's something that you, if it's, it's achievable. Anybody say you can't, you tell them, get out of your way. That's right. You can do it. You can do what you want to do. You just got to put all yeah, your put all your in energy in it yes. and, and accept help from people. You know, sometimes we don't want to accept help. You better ask for some help. <laughs> you know, there are people who don't, you know, say, oh, no, I can do this. No, mm -mm. You, no, no you can't. You can no. always see somebody that's got your back. Mm -hmm. And so. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Edna Bell. We'll see you next week, everybody, on Community Bell, Monday from 4 to 5. Join us. And if you have questions, you know, you can always email the question in, and we will try to answer it as best we can. You can play it back, our show back, anytime you mm -hmm. choose. It's a wonderful thing. WBTC Detroit. Thank you. Have a great week. We're getting ready to go to fireworks now. Yes, we are. Have a good evening. <laughs> Take care. Okay. <laughs>
YouTube. Our website, www.wvtcradio.com, or download our WVTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. 